Hi, I'm Larry Longschlong, popular host of Sky Sports News. Thank you for joining me here for what is episode 70 of Boot FM's long running, never bloody ending series with Manchester Central. I can't believe it's still going. Can you? Do you? I don't watch it. Do you still watch it? I still watch it. <laughs> anyway, Bruder Fans asked me to do the intro mainly because he's away arranging his transfers. He says he has a lot to share with you later on in the show. At the very end of the show, live on Sky Sports News Live, we've got a match. Leicester City versus Manchester Central kicking off their Premier League campaigns. It is pretty special though, being in the manager's office. I mean, you want to check out his whiskey cabinet. I think he's got a drink problem. Also, why is there a small Filipino woman under the desk with a mouth open? You okay? You want that? Oh. Right, okay. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome to my profile page. Now, before we get into it, which we've got a lot to get through really, um, just having a quick look at me. <clears throat> I'm 46 years old now. We're going into my ninth season and my last, no matter what, win, lose or draw, uh, I am definitely ending the series at the end of this year. Um, I've got a plan for a new series. I might have a week off, chill out with my family because I am off soon. I'm off for a fortnight soon, so I want to not only make a lot of content to put out for you guys, but I also want to have a break with my wife. I've got one week for me and one week with her. So, you know what I mean? That's, that's my plan anyway, boys and girls. Um, but I have made a lot of transfers this summer. Unexpected. I listened to some of you. you, you most of you agreed with me. Um, um, but we've ended up not actually spending a lot of money. It's worked out pretty well. So we've got news to get through. And we're going to have a game at the end of the episode. But all I'm going to do right now is nothing special. I'm going to show you why I've sold certain players and what we've done. And I'm going to show you what we've brought in. But I am excited about the squad this year. I think it's probably my best squad. It's young still. But it's got to be good enough. It's got to be. It's a challenge. It's got to be. Hey, <laughs> Let's get into it. Now with most of these players, what I wanted to do is just get rid of some of the fringe players. I've got, I had a good couple of guys who were in the early 20s who would never get in the first team. But with three star players in the reserves, in the under 23s. So... I just put them all for sale, offer them out. Some I've got good money for, some I haven't. I just wanted to get the biggest kitty to get the possible. And the first guy that went was Legion. You remember we've had him for a while. He's only played 21 games for us, scored two goals. He had a bit of promise, and then his promise disappeared. This one broke my heart. I wasn't going to sell him. I wasn't. I was going to loan him, but I got to a point where I got giddy selling players and bringing players in, and I couldn't balance, I couldn't balance the book. So to get the last player in I wanted. I needed to free up. I needed the extra money so I could free up wages. You know when you can budget slide. Um, so Bob ended up putting him up for sale. A couple of clubs came in for him. I think, can't remember two English teams and Celtic. And Celtic offered me the biggest money, but it wasn't all together. It was like I think they gave me three and a half million with five million on top of it. Um, so he's going to Celtic. He's now worth ten. He's a good player. I think he will be a beast in Scotland. So do you know what? Let's clap that legend off because he was a legend. This one was brilliant. Now the reason I sold him, I think it probably was for sale, I was going to keep him as an English player, just my fourth choice centre half. But I'll explain a bit more in detail later, but I found a wonder kid midfielder at Swansea, who was brilliant, who could play brilliantly in the centre, covered at left back, covered up right wing, random, I'll show you in a bit. Went in for a massive bid, and then I think it was Paris, is it Paris Saint-Germain? We'll find out in a bit. Blew me out of the water with 107 million quid. And they bought this kid, right, which is fair enough. So Swansea, loads of money. Next thing, Swansea come to me with a gigantic bid for James Buchanan. Well over 20 million, pushing 30 million for my fourth choice centre-half. I said I was going to try and sell him and I did. I put him up for sale. Quite a lot of clubs came in, no English teams. All foreign, I think a German team might have come in as well. Um, but Nantes came in from France, offering me good money for Baz. I mean, again, he's a good player, I think, in a French league. He'll be a, all right, he'll score some goals. Played for 64 times, scored 21 goals. Um, I liked him. First up, I listened to most of you. You said, get rid of the full-backs, keep the backups because they've got more promise. 
and that's what I did. I put the chef up for sale. Again, loads of random foreign, um, well, European teams came in, no English teams. Um, Besiktas came in, offered me a decent price, to be fair. Um, and he's gone, he was all right. He had moments of being okay. The other fullback out the door is Sebastian Chan. Now, a good few English teams came in for him when I put him up for sale. And the only uh, European team is Dortmund, so I accepted that bid, rejected the others, because I didn't really want to play against him. I like the idea of sending him abroad. He's 22, he's English, it might make him a better player. Um, and he might do well, got a great prize for him. Can't argue. He played 136 times for us. I really put effort into Chan, I did. I tried and tried, and his potential just kept getting worse. Next up is Barry Leverington. You might have forgot about him. The hardcore amongst you might remember him. He's 21. He was in the team when we, in the championship year when we were floating around early in the Premier League. I put him in the under 23s. He was up for sale, and then Norman last year, no one bought him. So I, just, I took him off the market, kept him as a backup, never needed him. I mean, he's, he's a championship player. Hull came in, put him up for sale for fact, give me five million quid. Snap the hands off. This is another player, only the hardcore amongst you might remember. It's Matt Whitnell. He's a goalkeeper who's been in my reserves now for years. He's only played for us nine times, but in nine goals. I signed him ages ago, five years ago. And it was only last year he started to whinge that he wanted first team football. And um, I put him up for sale. Brighton again, five million quid. Can't turn that down. Um, he's an alright keeper, to be fair. I think he was about two and a half, three star. So he's alright. But the best thing about Brighton was that I've noticed is they sold Jakey Bird. Jakey Bird's two years of hell at Brighton is over. He's gone down the league into to the championship and he's now playing for Fulham. So <sighs> Jakey Bird's only 24, maybe his career isn't over. I sold Stefano Mapelli, our biggest ever deal. Well he was our biggest ever deal. Um, we bought him for 42 million. He's only had one season, we'll have played 26 times. Good player, won the league with Juventus. He was good, but he couldn't get in the team. Ian Moss and the brass are better than him, right? He's on over 200 grand a week. And I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna sell him. Now someone put in the comments, get rid of him. Just get rid of him, cash in. Get a younger guy, you don't really need him. Because I've got Foreman as well, right? I'm thinking, do you know what? You're probably right. And as I'm going through, Inter Milan come in with this gigantic bid that it was broken up, right? Fair enough. But I think when everything's paid, it's not, not far off 80 million, right? I'm like, what's that this? Got to sell him. Freed up the 200 grand a week. It's allowed me to get two young players who I'm very excited about and have money to spare, really. So, yeah, I think if I hadn't sold him, would have been struggling. Now, here we are with Alex Merritt, and you'll see he's now a freaking Spurs player and he's worth 32 million, right? I agreed with you all. Let's just reloan the lad. Is a good backup, right? <clears throat> so I went in for an offer, and Liverpool said, we would like to give him a chance in the first team. Don't want to loan him. They let me buy him, but I didn't want to pay over 20 million quid for him. Backup keeper, right? <clears throat> Fair enough. I'll look in the market. And I found someone who's just as good, but two days later, he signs for Spurs. And I found a player called Alfredo. He's a three-star potential goalie. He's all right, he signed as a backup. I think he's just as good as Merritt. Uh, he's 2024. Cost me 10 million quid. It's come from Celta. Um, but I think he's perfect. I think he'll be a perfect backup player. Well, this is one of my favourite deals. And I've just blown the bang with this one. Look how good he is. Look how look at his physicals. This is a world class right back. He's Dutch. And we got him from Arsenal. And the reason he got it from that, he cost a lot of money. Like. I think eventually I'm going to have to pay 70 odd million for him, right? But the reason we were able to get him, because honestly, there's, there's some good fullbacks. They're just already at PSG or Real Madrid. Man City have got three, right, world class left backs. It's, it's annoying, right? And they won't sell them to me. Arsenal didn't make it into the Champions League. They finished six, was it, something? He wanted Champions League football, so I did the usual. Try and do it yourself sometimes. I put out a bit, and you know, we're in Champions League, aren't we? Oh, I thought it's a signing. Oh, and then he got, oh, I'd be interested. You want Champions League football? So I waited for a bid, Arsenal turned down my initial bid, and then you just keep adding to it, adding extras. Like, I'll give you, I'll give you 10 million when he scores 50 goals. When is that right back going to score 50 goals? But it works sometimes, I swear. And this is my left back, and to be honest, I really am happy with him, even though he's not actually a left back, because like I said, all the best left backs are taken and we don't want to come and they weren't that good. Now he was the best available option 
And I still think he's very good. He's 24. Look at his ability. Look at his uh, potential ability. Now, the reason I didn't mind him not being completely a left back is he can use both feet. Look, preferred feet is either. So we're training him as left back. Hopefully, it won't take him long to become a left back. Next up, I found myself a little wonder kid. Winger was pretty happy because he was cheap as chips. Buzzing with this kid. Obviously, I wouldn't mind a bit, maybe a bit more experience. Now, the idea behind this is we've got Garcia on the left, Kempf on the right. We've got Chris Chalk, who's got loads of potential still, who can play on either wing. Um, Gamma can cover on the right wing, can't he, as well? So this kid was brilliant. He can, can cover on the right wing, but he's naturally a left winger, so it, it just balances us out. Now, this is another player I am happy about. Now, this is the... When I was looking, right, for a left back, and I found that midfielder uh, who ended up going, I'll show you how good he is in a bit. It's like a domino effect. I found this midfielder at Swansea. We failed to get him. Swansea ended up buying him for stupid money. Swansea then used that money to buy Buchanan, which made me then look for a centre-half. I then found Danilo Esquitin Esquitinini. Shit, I need a nickname for him. Um, who's freaking awesome. He's a starter. This, this Brazilian kid is going to be starting. I'm not lying. He's better than the others. He is better. Trust me. Um, but it also made me, cost me a lot of money. But he also... When I looked at him, found another player in his squad. That's Fabio Santa Cruz. What a name. Don't let Fabio Santa Cruz anywhere near your wife because he will shag her. I am not lying. He's a midfielder. He can cover on the wing as well. Uh, again, cost me a few quid, but we had the money. He got loads of potential and he's a freaking wonder kid. Porto. Porto just get them South Americans, turn them into superstars and then sell them on. So here we go. Amazingly... Because of the Napelli deal, we've managed to not really spend a lot of money. I think we've spent 7 million quid, eventually. Happy days. Do you know what I mean? I've not ruined the club, really. We've managed to you know, fork out a lot of money. 142 million for a club our size. But like I said, until we sold Napelli, I was struggling. Um, I didn't have that. I couldn't get Diego Alonso. And I couldn't get Fabio Santa Cruz. I'd already got a Squintini, whatever his name is. Um, but I couldn't get these two. I was struggling and I'm thinking, crap. I've sort of... So once Mapelli went, it allowed me to get Santa Cruz to replace him and then Diego Alonso on the wing because it was just balancing them books. Was, it was bad. Here we are with the finances and you'll see we've got 55 million in the bank. Uh, and if you look at my wage budget, I've managed to now squeeze more out of it actually, to be fair. Um, it was we were around 2 million and I was spending over that. But now, now it's gone up to 2.7. Well, apparently the club have predicted to fail the Premier League FFP player wage rise regulations. Does it matter if this is the last year? So here we are on the tactics screen and I have tweaked it a little bit. You'll see it's now called New Central Version Point 2. And it's been doing okay, to be fair. Um, this is my A team, you'll see right in front of you now. You've got Shelley and Gamma up top, Gold Machines, Kemp on the right, Garcia on the left, Moss on the brass in the middle, Esquititini, Esquiti. Danny, yeah, uh, with Bon in the centre, with Bissot on the right and Abad on the left. Strong, strong squad here, I think. And if you look at them with their current ability, you'll see the majority of them are four-star players now. The only two that are is Garcia, but he's still only 21. Garcia's only 21, with lots of promise. And the other one is Mark Shelley, I think. Yeah, Mark Shelley is a three-star player who's obviously got tons of promise as well. Uh, and then if you look at my bench, it's not that bad, is it? It's not that bad. I really think we can do better than third this year. And if Man United could just lose a couple of games and not go undefeated. We only lost four games, so we just need to draw a few less. Man United just drop a few points and we could win the league this year. Now, onto the staff. Now, when I'm really into a series, I would say, I always do every little thing I can. And I'll be honest, I took me half the ball with the staff. We've just been doing a good job. But we didn't have the best staff. So I got rid of a few people. I brought in a lot of new people. And we've now got the best coaching team in every category. And we've got the best medical team in every category. Uh, I've improved the, the scouting team, but I didn't really think I needed to keep improving it just to waste money. And if we go on the actual um, coach's job screen, you'll see every category now. We've got four, four and a half. Three and a half for tactics, 
four, 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 four and a half, four and a half, three and a half, three. So my goalkeeper could be maybe a little touch better, which is distribution, I'm not too bothered about that. But the hardcore general training bits are quality. Now obviously, Larry told you at the beginning of the episode that we were playing Leicester today in the live comma, away at the King Power Stadium. Now, you can see here our pre-season, I'll have a quick chat about that in a minute. Um, but I think last year we had like four of the biggest teams in the first five games. It was a really tough start. This year we've got City in the third game, but if we can get past Leicester today, we've got Hull, City, Swansea, Bournemouth. Then we get Liverpool, Stoke, Newcastle, Everton, Brighton, Crystal Palace. All the way up to United in November, near the end of November, it's a pretty easy run apart from, say, Liverpool and City. Now let's have a quick chat about the pre-season. I did say in the last episode, we went, we had training camp in America, <clears throat> then we went to, we stayed in America. We got beat off DC though, 1-0, which was a bit shot by, and a bit worried. But then after that, we've been brilliant. We beat Indy 11, 3-0. Uh, we beat Philadelphia 3-1. I uh, enjoyed that game. Then we beat New England 3 0. So America was a success apart from the first game. Then we flew over to China, uh, played Hangzhou, is it? Uh, beat them 3 0. Beat Shanghai's Shenhua uh, 2 0. Beat Tianjin, is it? 6 0. Absolutely destroyed them. Mark Shelley, four goals. But then this was the game. It was on TV um, at our place, our only home. Friendly of the season, I thought, let's play a big team. Why not? And we thrashed Juventus. 4 0, Mark Shelley hat trick. Mark Shelley, hopefully, is going to keep on scoring goals because it was his bad year last year. Now, here we are with the transfers. The window shut, obviously. It shuts now in August, doesn't it? And you'll see uh, that guy at the top, Godfrey Ball. This is the kid I was talking about. 20 years old, played for Swansea for one year. I think they bought him for like 10 million quid. He's a wonder kid. And I just liked how he could cover at left back, but he looked really good. I just looked at him and thought, wow, he'd be perfect. And I think I put in like a 40, 50 million pound bid and he got accepted. And then Paris Saint-Germain come in with 100 and 107. Okay, let's have a live come. I think we've gone through the transfers. I've gone through a bit of the details when it comes to the start of the season. If you think things like bonuses, I've just maxed out. I've just paid him the most I can pay him just to hopefully give him extra incentive to win. But we've got to start off with a win, even though away from home against the former Premier League champions. Here we are with the match preview. Uh, we're favourites for the game, so better freaking win. We've got no injuries either. Can't wait. Hopefully these new kids can settle in better than some of the other new players have took time to settle in with. Uh, Man City played this morning and drew 1-1 with Bournemouth. First game of the new season, Bood. You're away to Leicester. You excited? Yeah, always excited to get a new campaign going, but I'm excited to see some of the new lads in action. We've got an exciting squad. Uh, I just can't wait to get going because I've uh, got big hopes this year. They've had a lot of big ins and outs this summer. We're going to be seeing some of the new signings starting today. Yeah, one or two maybe. Maybe one or maybe come off the bench. I've uh, got some great players, man. But we've already had a great squad anyway, so... Yeah, this has been, I've never felt this positive about a team, a Manchester Central squad. There's been a lot of rumours flying around, Bood. Everyone's saying that this could be the last year in charge for you here at Manchester. Is that true? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'll be honest. Uh, I've spoke to the chairman and I've got a couple of years left on my contract, but I think, uh, I don't want to distract from anything, but I think I might step down at the end of the year, let someone else take it on because I think I need a break. I need a holiday and I plan on going on a, getting my motorbike, go to America and just riding across the States uh, with just a couple of dollars in my pocket and a dream. Well, if it is going to be your last season, Bird, I'm going to be sad to see you go. I know the wife's going to be going too. She always had a bit of a soft spot for you. Yeah, I know. She's, uh, she's a bit friendly, your wife. Well, very friendly. So here we are at the King Power, and here's the team lineups. Um, starting to get more regens in teams now, are we? This, is it, this save's gone on. Is it the ninth year? Crazy, really. I can't believe I've been doing this since November. Um, I'm going to be serious. I'm going to be certain. Just, just keep it simple. I'm expecting you to win. A couple of greens. 
Let's do it. Here we come out the corner. Oh, I am excited this season, I can't lie. Uh, maybe you don't agree. I know uh, one of my good friends, Dave, who said in the comments he wanted me to buy some experience. I don't like I don't, I don't like experience. I didn't want any real players, really. Unless they have to like have to get a merit or someone like that. Um, I wanted youth, I wanted good young players to add to me, good young squad. Now we have tweaked the tactic as well. Um, I tweaked it about halfway through pre-season. So we beat Juventus 4-0 with this tactic. So I'll be interested to see what I've done. I've not done too much. Just a little tweak here, and a little change here with crosses and stuff like that. So we'll find out what happens. Maybe a few player roles, I don't know if you noticed. That's changed as well. Here's Mark Shelley and he started off where I wanted him to. 14 minutes in, 1-0. Come on, Shelster. So yeah, thanks for everyone's continued support. Thanks for everyone who commented on the last episode. I know not loads of you did, but the guys who actually gave me some input. It's good that you all agree with me. And Leicester have equalised straight away. Demand more. What the hell was that? Yeah, I've changed a few things. Um, the tactic, I always, I've always played it as structured. It, it, it's early days, which is a non-league tactic, and then I've, I've kind of altered it as I've gone along. So you don't want, when you haven't got a lot of technical ability, you don't want them doing loads of things, do you? So I've become a bit more flexible with it, so we'll see what happens this year. Closing down, let's show these, we're freaking Manchester Central. We finish, oh good save, come down. Five minutes to go, I'm just going to go attacking. For the last five minutes, and I'm going to, they've got injured bloody players, I'm going to push forward as well. Right, come on, nick the ball off him, oh he's nicked it off him. Yammer crosses it in, but poor ball. Moss is on the ball, give it to Kemp, Kemp, nice little pass to Gamma. Gamma, Gamma. Well it's our time here at the King Power, and I can't lie, I'm a little disappointted. I brought Chris Chalk on for Garcia because he's on a booking and he's playing shockingly. Moss is on a booking but I'll keep him on for now. Um, and I'm going to be angry. I'm not happy with that. There we go, fired up, greens. Go and freaking win the game please. Come on lads, we're kicking off here the second half. Come on, we can't beat Leicester. I know we're away from home but we can't beat Leicester, we're not going to win the league. Here's Kempfe, we need a legendary Kempf ball. No, but Moss might pick it up. Oh, come on. Hand out for Gray. Booms it forward. Is anyone going to get onto it? Mark Shelley can bring it down. Oh, wow! Oh! Here's Gamma. Now, Gamma, don't get, don't trip over. Don't trip over. Find Mark Shelley. He's found Mark Shelley. And Mark Shelley can't score. Come on. Good tackle. Come on. Close him down. Get to him. I can't wait for virtual, virtual reality football manager and I'm down on the pitch. Wow. Wow. Foreman's come on for Mosses in a bucket and I bring Maiden on for Gamma. How'd you beat Juventus 4-0? Right, come on, Matt. Get us back into this. We've got plenty of time here. Oh, for God's sake. Come on, get us back into this. We're a good ball. Good cross. Can anyone get onto it? No, no. It's it, Chalky. It's it, someone. Get in. Kemp didn't set it up. He's freaking scored an equaliser. Got to be full-time here at the King Power. It's ended 2-2. Do you know what? <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I'm still not going to be nice to him. I'm not happy with that. There you go. Got him fired up for the next one. <laughs> so here's the Premier League. Man United have got to play later. Hopefully Burnley will do us a favour. Uh, you'll find out in the next episode. This one get a bit, hey? We can build on it. Right then, episode 71. It's all about the Premier League this year. Um, that's what I'm going to concentrate on the most. So we'll have a nice gap here. We'll play Hull City, Swansea, uh, our Champions League game. Then we'll play Bournemouth. A League Cup game, which are B team, and we'll come back against one of our big rivals in the league, which is Liverpool away at Anfield. Well, there you go. Thank you for watching episode 70. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. If you did, smash that like button for me. If you're brand new, feel free to subscribe. Make sure you watch the whole series, it's well worth watching. Honest, my mum says it's her favorite, and my mum wouldn't lie to you, she's a legend, honestly. Um, but yeah, thanks for checking this out, and thanks for your support. And, Honestly, it's amazing. Hopefully, you're going to really get into this last year because uh, it definitely is the last year. So, let me know what you think down below about my signings. Uh, don't be shy. Write in the comments. And make sure you come back for episode 71 when we go to Anfield again. Hey, we always have an adventure. Derek, get the tank coach ready. <laughs>